Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about cytotoxic lesion of the corpus callosum. Cytotoxic lesion of the corpus callosum uh, consider a clinical radiological syndrome that generate transitory damage to the corpus callosum especially in the spinum with a multi causal origin such as drug, malignant neoplasm, infection, subarachnoid hemorrhage, metabolic disorder, and traumas. Clinical presentation relate to the underlying pathology rather than to the colossal lesion itself. Unlike many other lesions of the corpus callosum, cytotoxic lesion of the corpus callosum do not demonstrate convincing sign or symptom of hemispheric discontinuity connections such as pseudo neglect alien hand syndrome apraxia of the left hand agraphia alexia and visual apraxia the lesion appeared to the result from a stereotype cascade of cytokine and stimulated cell which the end the result is cytotoxic edema. It just appears that the reason the splenum of the corpus callosum is preferentially affected is the presence of an of a high density of oligodendrocyte expressing large number of Glutamate affected receptor. Classically, cytotoxic lesion of corpus callosum are seen in patient with seizure or metabolic disturbance, although many other etiology are recommended. First one is seizure, complex relationship, cytotoxic lesion of corpus callosum seen in a variety of setting, like anti-epileptic medication with or without seizure, sudden cessation of anti-epileptic drug classic, seizure with or without anti-epileptic drug medication. Second, metabolic disturbance, electrolyte imbalance like hyperammonemia, hyper and hyponatremia, hemolytic uremic syndrome, hepatic encephalopathy, hypoglycemia, myxifava, big nami disease, osmotic the melanization, extra me melanolysis, venic encephalopathy, Wilson disease. Infection. Report in a wide range of cerebral infection include cerebral abscess and cephalitis, meningitis that caused by viral bacteria. Mycobacteria, CNS malignancy, many are associated with chemotherapy and or seizure. Drug intoxication, antidepressant, anti-epileptic drug, anti-psychotic, chemotherapy, corticosteroid, pesticide, 
And the last is subarachnoid hemorrhage, especially if large swallow, not the result of vasospasm. Limiting feature. Transient reason of the splenum are only result really appreciable on MOI where they have three distinct patterns. First, where circumscribed small oval region in the middle, midline within the sub stand of the splenum, most common. More extensive region where well defined a regular region extending throughout the splenum and into adjacent hemisphere. Blumberang sign. Boomerang sign. More extensive extension anteriorly, anteriorly into the body of the corpus callosum. So it means the first one is well circumscribed within the corpus, within the spinum. This again it means it extend to adjacent. around the spinum and the second is attention entirely in the body of the corpus callosum the small level circumscribed lesion and the typical lesion seen in the setting of seizure cessation of antipileptic medication, whereas the larger lesion is more typical of other etiology. I mean, smaller is usually caused by seizure, cessation of anti drug medication, but where is the light lesion is, it means more typically caused by other etiology. MRI. In the MRI, this lesion demonstrate the expected feature like in T1, we can find hypo-intent, in T2, find hyper-intent, DWI or ADC, restricted diffuse, ADC typically around 300 to 1500 by 10 minus 6 power. T1 contrast no enhancement. So this is image of 4 years old male can be acute onset paresthesia. The my so on the first image axial flare we can find the hyper intensity in the Splenum on the sagittal T1, we see very subtle hypo intent in the splenum and axial T2. Yes, we can find the hyper intent in the splenum and the axial ADC. We see hypo intents in the splenum. All this image we uh, get from the same patient. Another patient, 20 years old male, two day story of drowsiness, lethargy, and now androsable. So on the axial DWI, we can see hyperintent in the splenum. And in the axial T2, we saw, we saw very subtle, subtle hyper intense in the spinum. The same patient in axial T1, we see ISO 
we cannot find any abnormality. But in the axial T1, the contrast also no enhanced. Another patient is 25 years old male with headache. In coronal flare, we can see hyperintent in the splenum. In axial T2, we also see well defined hyperintensity in the splenum. In the two kid, uh, two years old. Two years, 11 months old female. The almond eyes saw hyper intensity in the spinum and hyper intense in the image on the right side with restrictive uh, status. The same patient, but in follow-up image, we saw we saw resolution of the diffuse restriction focus on the splenum of the corpus callosum without residual lesion. In the 21 years old patient. A part to be not more, although very slight, if shoes restriction with not more T2 intent in the splenum could be identified retrospectively. Now follow up. MRI after five day later, reverse splenial ovoid diffuse restrict. Restrict with T2 hyper intent. In CT, the Lesion could be hypo intent or hyper intent according to the cause of the this condition. For example, if we see the hyper intent mostly related to the hemorrhage, and hypo intent may be related to other causes because of edema, which can cause edema in this uh, region. So the image of the seven years old man suspected of having COVID, we see subtle hyper intense lesion was seen in the spinum of the corpus callosum in this area. Other case, 30 years old man with seizure. We see hypo intent in the splenum. Another case is 41 years old female. Multiple CG head image reveal edema with hypo density involving the posterior body and spinum of the corpus callosum viral indicate minimal subarachnoid hemorrhage seen along right parietal convexity black arrow indicate.
So the treatment, the treatment and prognosis is depend on the cause. But in the setting of epilepsy or anti-epileptic drug related lesion, it is very good prognosis. Thank you.